You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to another live edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by Manscaped.com the day after Arsenal got a historic, no I'm just joking, a European win over Mulder uh, in the UEFA Europa League. Arsenal strengthening their position further in the group with another three points. That's nine out of nine now. Really, really positive start. Um but we're bringing you something a little bit different uh, this afternoon, and we're going to be bringing you more of these, hopefully, um, more of these sort of shorter features where we discuss um, relevant points um, and relevant subjects uh, sort of daily. So really, really looking forward to doing this one. And, and of course, the subject, as you've probably gathered from the title, from the thumbnail, etc., is uh, young Joseph Willock. I'm probably the only one apart from his mother who calls him that. Uh, but yeah, Joe Willock has... Um, has really, really impressed um, in the UEFA Europa League. And I know I, I know the opponents haven't been great. And I think it's very, very important to put that caveat in there um, that, you know, yes, it was against Dundalk. Yes, it was against Mulder. Um, you know, the, the two games that we're speaking about and, and in particular as well, they were both at home, which probably plays a part as well. Um, I, I am factoring all of that in. And I want to start off by saying that I'm not sitting here for a second and saying that Joe Willock should start every single week. But the question is, has Joe Willock done enough to warrant being at least further on in Mikel Arteta's plans? Because if you think about it, you know, he, he turned in that really impressive performance against Dundalk and then was completely overlooked for the Manchester United game. And again, I'm not saying that Joe Willock should have been in the starting lineup at Old Trafford, but I am certainly saying that Joe Willock warranted a place in the squad. And these Europa League games are a really, really good, ex a really good opportunity. Sorry for the young players, for the fringe players, to stake a claim for their place in the team, in the first team squad. And if you play well and then you don't get rewarded for it, it kind of takes away that, you know, the what's the word? I mean, I I like to see the team picked on merit. Um, I like to see. I don't like to see reactionary things, so I like to see the team picked on merit based on a period of time rather than just saying Willock scored against Dundalk, now he must start against Man United. I'm not saying that, but I think he certainly warranted a place in the squad at least. Um, and I think he has been um, impressive in the last couple of Europa League fixtures. And that, of course, has obviously sparked this whole debate. So I just want to make a few points on that. Get your thoughts in the live comments. A big hello to every single one of you who is joining us at the moment, whether that is on Facebook, whether that is on YouTube, whether that is on Twitter. Before we start, make sure um, you smash that like button if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, it is very, very much appreciated. Right, let's talk about Joe Willock stylistically, because I think Joe Willock stylistically is very, very different to any of the other midfield options that Mikel Arteta has at his disposal. And I think that's really, really important in this discussion, in this debate. Joe Willock gives you that ability to make runs in between the lines, to get up alongside the forwards, to run beyond the forwards at times as well. And, and it's very Aaron Ramsey-esque, yet... When you look at the rest of our midfield players, Ceballos, Xhaka, Partey, you don't really see that. You don't see that ability from any of them. And it's no disrespect to the players. It's not a criticism of them or anything like that. We're just sim simply talking about their style of play and what it is that they're comfortable doing. And, and Joe Willock is, for me, the only one in the Arsenal squad currently that is, is capable of doing that or, or has that in his locker. Has that in his locker is probably a, a better way to say it than than capable because it's not to say that other players aren't capable. It's just with Willock, he does it very, very frequently and it's a really key feature of his game and of his style of play. And I think that when you're struggling to break down low blocks, it's so, so important to have players that are willing to A, pick up the ball and run at people and B, be more aggressive in the runs that they make. I feel like 
one of the issues we've had at Arsenal in recent times, and we talk about a lack of creativity quite a bit, is the fact that we do pass the ball around a lot, slowly, sideways more often than not. And you're never actually really pulling people out of position. But somebody like Joe Willock, who, who gets into a situation where he's running at the back line, he's broken through the midfield line and he's now on the defence. He causes uncertainty. He causes chaos. He causes defenders a problem all the time. If you're a central midfielder who's been tasked with being part of this low block and all of a sudden young Joe Willock sprints past you, what do you do? Do you go with him? Do you pass him on? When you're, when you're passing players on to somebody else, there's always a risk that you don't react quick enough or, or there's a bit of confusion and that player gets free. If you do follow him, if you do go with him, you're creating space in the midfield for someone else to exploit. So I think it's really important to have players that do what Joe Willock does. The issue is here that Mikel Arteta's current system doesn't really accommodate for somebody like that. In the Europa League against some of the weaker teams, we've seen Arsenal... You know, yes, revert to a back three in certain moments of the game. You know, we've seen Granit Xhaka, for example, dropping into these deeper positions at times. But ultimately, Arsenal feel as though they're a little bit more comfortable and a little bit um, safer in in then being a little bit more aggressive. And by that, I mean playing with the three midfield. So last night, Granit Xhaka was very much playing more like a midfielder than he has in recent weeks. And that was because of the opposition and because we felt comfortable in doing that and at home. But we've seen in the Premier League that that is not the way Mikel Arteta wants to play at present. And so because of that, it's very difficult to see how you fit Joe Willock into this side. But what I will say is when we're chasing a game, when we need a goal, when we're struggling to break people down who are offering very little going the other way, and that is going to be the case fairly often in this Premier League, I don't think there's anything wrong with throwing Joe Willock on. I think he, he deserves more game time than he's currently getting, but I don't think necessarily that he's been so good or is that good that you then abandon the system that has worked relatively well for you. So I understand why this is a difficult one for Mikel Arteta. I understand why he's in a bit of a catch-22 with this. But for me, um, I think that his performances in the Europa League are impossible to ignore. And I think when you're trying to create a culture at a football club by which players perform and then they get rewarded by giving, being given playing time, I think, as I said, it's impossible to continue ignoring the good work that Joe Willock is doing. He has been um, very impressive of late. And you can tell when he speaks, he's a very, very humble young man, which I absolutely love about him. Um he was interviewed after the game, wasn't he? And he, he, he kind of, you always get these loaded questions put towards the player, which is kind of trying to get him to say that he's frustrated with the fact that he's not playing regularly. But he didn't do that. He didn't bite. And it shows he's got a very good head on his shoulders, young Joe Willett, because often we see young footballers trapped into giving answers by very experienced journalists, very experienced broadcasters. Answers that may be, a, a sort of reactionary answers that can be taken in the wrong way. But Joe Willock was very, very smart in that. He dealt with it really, really well. And he just kept saying, you know, I'm taking it game by game. This is part of my journey. He was asked about the um, the fact that he wasn't in the squad against Manchester United. And he said he trusts in the manager and that part of his development is about learning from disappointment, which is absolutely spot on. In any walk of life, in anything that you do, disappointment is a part of that and you've got to be able to handle it you've got to be able to channel that feeling in the right way and Joe Willock for me in the way he speaks is is showing that he's got that nailed down he's also very well media trained which is helpful in this business as well so um, yeah great great to see that and, and it's great to hear um, more experienced pros who have kind of been there and done that such as his teammate David Lewis speaking about him in such glowing terms after the game. David Lewis has been hailed quite a bit, actually, in recent seasons for the influence that he has on the young players around him. And that was evident again last night after the game. Um, he was obviously having a bit of a laugh and a joke with Joe Willock. He called him a fantastic kid. He said he's always behind him. It's a pleasure uh, to play with him because he's very, very humble. Um, and that's absolutely right. I think that... Somebody like David Lewis is a big help to these kids and, and it's part of the reason why I think Arsenal wanted to keep him around the place. Um, but 
What he did very well as well is that he did make the point that there is still more to come from Joe Willock. That Joe Willock cannot rest on his laurels based on a couple of Europa League appearances and a couple of good good displays. He needs to kick on. He needs to continue to play in that way. And he needs to continue making Mikel Arteta's decision with regards to him a difficult one. So that was really, really interesting to hear from David Lewis. And it tells you... Um, all you need to know about his relationship with some of the developing talent and in particular uh, Joe Willock. Spoken about Willock's sort of uh, tendency to to run forward, to break between lines, to get into goal scoring positions, which he does really, really well. And, and we saw the first goal that was chalked off um, wrongly, actually. I think the linesman thought that it was Joe Willock who turned it in. It was actually... Eddie and Ketty are much to our frustration. But again, that was another prime example of Joe Willett getting into a spot um, from which he could inflict real damage. And that that bit of sort of bravery in terms of his runs, in terms of his positioning, even when you're a midfielder, is 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 so, so important to his game. It's part of his identity. It's who he is. And the reason I'm not sort of sitting here and demanding that he plays in the Premier League is because I know that that just doesn't fit in with what Mikel Arteta is doing at the moment. I'd like to think that there will be Premier League games, particularly at home, particularly against some of the so-called weaker opposition where Joe Willock could have an impact and Joe Willock could be called upon. But I understand why he's not playing regularly at the moment and I get it. Um, but he's got to be patient. He's got to keep taking his chances. And I do think that in the longer term, and I think we've all discussed this, um, you know, over the years um, or over the years, but also I think maybe more um, specifically since Mikel Arteta has taken over, that when he feels like he has the right balance in the rest of the team, then maybe he'll be a little bit more ambitious. Maybe his midfielders will be given that extra bit of license. But at this moment in time, when you look at the personnel, even if they were given that license, you still think that Joe Willock is the only one who would make those runs, who would continuously get into goal scoring positions and, and support the centre forward, because that is just Joe Willock's game. And it's not Danny Sabas's game. It's not Granite Xhaka's game. It's not Thomas Partey's game. So don't expect that from them. But with Joe Willock, it is very much a part of his DNA, a part of his identity. And he could really help us out, I think, in, in some of the games where we are struggling to create a lot of chances. We are struggling to break people down. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how, if, in particular, if he continues to deliver on the European stage and whenever he is given the chances, how he can then translate that into helping this side in the Premier League and in some of the more high-profile games. Um... I think, you know, it's um, it's a debate that's going to crop up quite a bit in the next sort of few weeks. As I said, particularly if he continues to perform in these games when given the opportunity. But still, I guess my overall thought is, is he ready to, to play regularly in the Premier League? I think he's ready to feature regularly in the Premier League. I don't think he's ready to start every single game. And that's partly because I'm not still entirely convinced that Joe Willock is at that level, but also because it wouldn't fit into the system. So it's a combination of reasons for me, as opposed to me just sitting here and saying Willock isn't good enough or he just doesn't fit in the system. I think it's a bit of both on my part. Um, and so, you know, I'm still a little bit sort of cautious about that and a little bit cautious about getting carried away by his performances in games, which, you know, let's, let's be honest, Games against Dundalk and games against Mulder. Two teams that we really, really should be putting to the sword. We did, to be fair. Um, but two teams that we should be rolling over fairly comfortably, even when under strength. So, yeah. Um, long way to go for Joe Willett before I say that he's a ready to be a Premier League regular for a side like Arsenal. He could play in the Premier League regularly for, for another club. I, I don't doubt that for a second. But he just needs to find a bit more consistency. He's found it in a couple of games consecutively now. Let's hope he can build on that. Let's hope he can push on that. And let's hope he can develop further. Let me know what you guys think uh, about the potential of Joe Willock playing in the Premier League going forward do you think that he deserves to play more regularly than he currently does do you think he should go into the starting lineup and and subsequently Arsenal should change their formation or change their system tweak it to be a little bit more potent in the forward areas let me know in the comments uh, just a quick reminder to you all that this podcast is sponsored by Manscaped 
manscaped.com so for all your male grooming needs check out manscaped.com and if you wish to receive um 20 off your order and free shipping to the uk or anywhere else in the world then enter our promo code which you can see rolling across the bottom of your screen is chronicles afc in capital letters so uh, do check that out um right let's have a look at the poll that we put up on our youtube community uh, page earlier on today if you haven't checked that out please do so we post articles there we post opinion polls uh we post all sorts there for you guys to interact with and get involved with and comment on um so even when we're not putting out videos we're putting out this kind of stuff in between as well so i'd love to i'd love to get more of you involved on that and the the poll this morning was is Joe Willock ready to play regularly for Arsenal in the Premier League up until now uh, 41% of you say yes and 59% of you say not quite Um, so Joe Willock in the eyes of the majority of you is still a little bit short um, of playing first team football um, in the Premier League on a regular basis for Arsenal but he certainly I don't think anybody can deny that he is certainly on the right track and moving in the right direction right um, let's have a look at what some of you guys have to say in the comments Robin says after his two latest performances in the Europa League he absolutely deserves to be in the squad at least against Villa on Sunday I, I completely agree and when I spoke about the type of games that Joe Willock may be useful for. I think that this is one of them. Um, You know, people were raving and ranting about Aston Villa after their start to the season. I still think they'll have a far better season than they did last time out. But they're not title challengers. They're not top four contenders. They're not top six contenders. And I think if they were able to sneak into the top half or around about mid-table, that would be a fantastic season for Dean Smith's side. Um, Graham Sutherland says he can play a regular part from the bench, certainly. Let's not get carried away, though. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Um, that's absolutely fair. Martin111 says, Harry the lad, how's it going? I'm good, thank you, sir. How are you? Uh, big hello to Omar. Big hello to Fergus. Um, Callum says if he learns how to use his body gain some more strength I think he will be ready Harry Um, Femi says afternoon Harry Uh, Omar goes on to say he's not ready in my opinion you've got to look at the opposition with all due respect yeah I think that's fair Um, I think that is fair you need to um, take that into consideration Alex says, when he plays in cup matches, Europa, Carabao and FA Cup, he's quite influential. When he plays a Premier League match, he's not quite at it. Yeah, um, I mean, I I totally get that. And I don't think that he's done enough in in the chances he has had in the Premier League up until now at Arsenal to warrant being a starter. Um, But what more can he do? He gets the opportunities in the cups and he is performing. So... I feel like if you're going to... And Mikel Arteta talks a lot about it, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He talks about culture a lot at the club. And if you're trying to build this culture by where, um, you know, players are rewarded for good performances, then you find, you put yourself in a difficult situation if you start ignoring those positive performances. No matter who the opposition is and continuing to overlook those players, then what's the point in, in performing in those games surely there's got to be a reward for it now it may not be that you go straight into the starting lineup in a Premier League game but at least in my view you should get a place on the substitutes bench I think anyway Um, Zissi says I feel we have enough to beat Villa and starting Joe Willick in the Ramsey role may actually benefit our forwards especially at home to a Villa leaking goals yeah I think he can benefit our forwards Um, I'm still not convinced that Mikel will will start that way or even think about starting that way. Um, But I do think it does help the centre forward when he gets in and amongst them. It takes the the attention off of them. All of a sudden, two centre-halves have two players to deal with as opposed to one. Um, So I do think it is a big help and those runs are are really key. Um, Happy Soul says, now the hype begins. Joe Willock is good but needs a bit more time. Maybe a loan spell to better his play. I actually think that and I spoke about it on a pod the other day because we were we were kind of dissecting Mikel Arteta's press conference ahead of this game against uh, Mulder. And he did speak about the fact that Arsenal had considered options um, for Joe Willock in the summer. And those options were Joe Willock moving away on loan. Now, I think, that, and I said it at the time, the reason he kept him is because of what I've spoken about earlier on. That his profile is very different to that of the other midfielders. He gives Arsenal an alternative 
And I think for that reason, he should stay. And I think that he will get opportunities. And if he continues to take them, I don't think it will be long before he's in contention. Eduardo says if Willett can have better decision making he'd be a better player for the Prem but he needs to be coached yeah and the guy's young we've got to remember that you know he's still developing um, Russ Morgan slightly more positive about Willock and he says he could be the answer to our creative issues I think he could be in the future I'm not sure he is right now um, but again that's not to take anything away from the performances that he's turned in in the last couple of Europa League fixtures uh, Guns and Yellow Ribbons check out the Guns and Yellow Ribbons podcast it's a, a wonderful show head over there and check them out and uh, Fergus asks is Willock ahead of a Mill Smith row I think at the moment you have to say he is I think you have to say that he is I mean a, a Mill Smith row is somebody that when I've watched him in the past, I've always raved about him. I've always said that of all the young talents at Arsenal, he's the one I look at and I think, my God, in terms of natural ability, this guy's got it. The injuries and fitness have been a massive, massive issue from Emil Smith-Rowe. And he can't earn himself a place in the team if he's not fit to play. And he's not fit to showcase himself um, in these kind of games. I feel like Emil Smith-Rowe has missed a massive opportunity by being... I know it's not his fault, but by by being unfit at the start of the Europa League campaign, even, you know, the remainder of the group games, once we do seal qualification, there's an argument that you may see Mikel Arteta give those kind of players an opportunity in those games as well. But if Emil Smith-Rowe can't get himself fit, then I feel like he's missing out on a huge opportunity. And Joe Willock isn't. Joe Willock is taking those opportunities. And so he has to, in my view, be ahead of Emil Smith-Rowe at this moment in time. In terms of natural ability, in terms of football brain, in terms of overall talent, I still feel like Emil Smith Rowe is a more cultured footballer. Is the type of footballer that I like um, more than uh, than uh, Joe Willock is. But one's fit, one's taking his opportunities when they're coming along. One is unfit, and even when he has been fit, there's question marks around whether he has taken those opportunities. Um, and perform to the level that some people expect of him um, but yeah he's still young as well and let's not let's not stick the knife in let's not go OTT on this but there is a lot uh, to come from both of those players hopefully but at this moment in time if you're asking me which one's ahead of which I think that that Joe Willock has to be ahead of Emil Smith Rowe Right, that brings us to the end of this brief edition of the podcast, the quick live show discussing Joe Willock. Let us know your thoughts in the comments if you're watching this on replay. Let us know your thoughts in the comments if you're listening to this via the audio platforms too. We'll be back very, very soon with more content, including my Premier League weekend predictions this evening. First time I'm going to be doing that, so very much looking forward uh, to sharing my predictions for the weekend's games with you and my reasoning for those as well. I'm not just going to sit there and run through the scores. I'm going to tell you why I think what I think. And fingers crossed we get some correct uh, moving into the next round of Premier League games. Don't forget this podcast is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Enter the discount code Chronicles AFC to get 20% off and free shipping. And if you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And we'll be back very soon. Until then, take care and stay safe. Cheers. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.